Hey YouTube, the first Vulture base on YouTube. I just searched uh, YouTube to see if for Vulture base, and the first picture that came up was me playing Scavenger base. This one. So YouTube worldwide exclusive. This is these are quite rare. Um, I have seen a couple for sale. Um, since I started started getting into the Mad Washburns, so that'd be what five years something like that. Um, obviously as soon as I heard. There was a vulture, I had to have it. So this is part of the wing series, as you can tell I've got a lot of the wing series here. Um, that that one's not, it's just so there wasn't a blank space, that's where this one was sitting. So these were built by a company called Yamaki in late, late 70s, early 80s. This one here is a 1979, I actually just did a video last week, the week before, on all, all the, uh, sort of an overview of all the wing series and I forgot to mention that this one came out at the start. So at the very start there was just the Hawk, the Hawk, the Vulcan, and the Vulture base. Um, I don't, it's a sort of strange one, it doesn't appear in any catalogues, this one. Um, it does exist, basically what it is, is a base version of the Hawk, which is this one here. So it's a three piece neck, uh, maple wallet. Rosewood, or whatever it is, and then maple. You can see it runs all the way through. Um, I got this one, I bought this like about a year ago. My pal in Denmark found it on a, a local thing somewhere near Copenhagen for a cheap, a really, really cheap price. Like by far the cheapest I've ever seen one of these. Um, unfortunately, when I bought it like a year ago, uh, the, the, I just got my pal to pick it up. I actually came with an amp, so part of the deal was you know, he can have the amp for picking it up and then I'll pay the postage. So it took a while to get it organised through CITES and all these things and then there was all the COVID and blah, blah, blah. So basically I've got it now. Um, so what I bought was a red one and red ones are really non-existent basically. Um, it only came in tobacco sunburst, a, ch a cherry sunburst and brown, brown being that one. I have seen a, a couple... If you, if you look up Google Images, there's a couple that are different colours, but um, not very many. Um, I think there, there might even be a maple one. I don't know, because Washburn were a sort of funny company. They made, because they were handmade in this wee factory, only had like 30 people in it, they could churn out, you know, 20 all different colours and stuff. It wasn't like, you know, in modern times, if you want to change a detail on a guitar, it's all a CNC thing and you're churning out, you know, thousands of them a day and stuff and this sort of thing they were churning them out in batches of sort of 25 so it's not that difficult to make one you know quite significantly different be a different colour or maybe a slightly different pick up layout and stuff because you were just sort of talking to a couple of people on the, the lines that are saying well do you want to put an extra pick up in this one type thing um, so it was achievable there is a two pick up version um, I'm not I don't think it's called a Vulture 2 there apparently is a Vulture 2 um, and if the thing that I've seen it in a couple of situations, I've seen it with the P-Bass pickup where it is. I've seen it with the P-Bass pickup where it is and a jazz bass pickup. And I've seen it with the P-Bass pickup up here somewhere, you know, up closer to the neck and the jazz bass pickup. So this is pretty much the, um, this, it might be my favourite colour of the ones that are freely available. Because if you look at, if you type in Washburn Bulge, if you if you found that, found this, doing that you've probably seen there's a picture of a, like a black guy in a white suit smoking a fag playing one of these and it's just like it's like that you couldn't be much cooler than that guy um yeah so uh, as i said 1979 oh as far as i know this is this is all original um a wee bit of a panic with the the trust rods because as i said so I, I, as i said i bought this one as a red one and I told my pal, you know, don't clean it, don't do anything like that, I, I, I want the, the joy of cleaning it and then when I got when I finally got it, it was it had been painted with a can. And because it was so dirty, it wasn't that easy to see, but you know, if you held it up to the light, you could see the drips and stuff and it, it was, it was not good. I've got a wee bit of a, a memento of that colour, that's the colour it was there, sort of terracotta red. This is the back plate, which I haven't yet scraped, um, wooden back plate, back, back plate, and I keep standing on the lead, but obviously that goes on here um, and it should be it's probably quite well matched to the wood on the back once I've taken the red paint off it uh, I'm going to uh, redo the replace the pots in this because they're not they're not original anyway but um, 
and they're not particularly good. So I'm, I'm going to do that. I, I'll probably foil shield the inside of the pickup cavity. You know? um, yeah, so it's full scale, 34 inch, um, neck through, bound neck, bound body. The ashes, I believe, is the ash. The body is pretty much ash, and it's a carved top. It's like a, a, ha a hand carved top. Maybe not as as prominent as it is on the guitar version. Um, actually, I'll just hold up the guitar version and see what I'm going for. Yeah, so this is a, a 79 Hawk, the guitar version of this, as you can see. It's a lot about, this, this, this one's got a ridiculously amazing wood, which is made of um, this one. Because I spent the last month scraping off the red paint, it's not got shiny yet. I will get it back to being shiny, so it kind of looks a sort of satin finish, um, even though it should be. The reason I stopped with the polishing and the buffing was I wanted to make sure the base worked <laughs> before I went that far. Um, had a moment of panic when I was, the, you know, the truss rod needed adjusted, so I put, put the Allen key into the truss rod, and then it was like nothing, nothing, you know, the truss rod's wobbling. And because there's a very tight channel for the truss rod when I was getting the Allen key and I was only getting you know that much at a turn, so after about 10 turns, I'm sitting there looking at it going, oh no, you know, it's a, it's a neck through, so you can't just swap the neck. And it's not easy to fix a truss rod. But then eventually the truss rod caught on. So I said, this, this one basically, I don't think the truss rod's ever done anything in its 41 year history. Uh, it must have just had a high action. Um, so now the truss rod's working and connected and it seems to be playing well. The pickup is not a DiMarzio type, which I was really surprised about. I was really expecting it to be um most of these for well, the scavenger does has you know like the hex poles. Basically that's what I'm saying by DiMarzio type. Is DiMarzio type is it's cream and it's got you know Allen key poles on it. This doesn't have adjustable poles. It does have a meta brass plate behind it. I'm not sure it'll be a go to a pickup I would imagine. The bridge is brass blocks which I've obviously cleaned up. They weren't as clean as this when I got it. Um and it's through strung. Um, very pretty. A very a very pretty bass. Um, I think I will be trying. I'll be trying this out in the Sabbath band. Anyway, um, that these didn't last long in the range. I don't know why. Um, there are in the price list. I've got a couple of price lists from 1980, and um, yeah, that's a squeaky strap. I think that's because I've polished the body so much. Um, so they're. Pretty rare, but I, I think they kind of went from sort of 71 to it's an 82 type thing, but we're never big enough to be in a catalogue. I don't know how that works. Um, no famous users as far as I can tell. And I don't know, if, I mean, the scavenger base seems to have sold quite well. You see quite a lot of them. Um, that did make it into the catalogue. The scavenger's like a, a bolt-on, sort of cheaper variant. There's the, the Raven, which is a sort of guitar version of the scavenger. Um, and there was never, what would be the cool was to see if you get a Falcon, which is the, the slightly fancier one. It'd be, it'd be meant, I'd love to see one of, one of them as a bass would be stunning, you know, with the brass inlays and, um, you know, like I wrote the rosewood top. Although maybe, uh, uh, maybe, you know, maybe I wrote a rosewood top and the three-piece neck, the five-piece neck through would be, look pretty smashing, but... They didn't make it, obviously, because this one obviously must have not sold well enough. Um, yeah, so the entire wing bass range consists of this bass and the scavenger. And there's another one called an SB40, which is the same shape as the Force Series. But it's like this, so if you just imagine this bass with this headstock, but cut to that shape, that's the other one, um, which is technically part of the wing series, but it's not called, like, it doesn't have a birth name, it's just called an SB40, and it's not this shape, so I, that's how I'm, I'm maintaining I've got the whole early wing series, because that one, although it's really cool, and it's, it's, it's not this shape, and it's not called like a Condor or something like that. That might have been, so somebody actually coming to pick up a guitar, maybe I should give up this video. Uh, who, who, see who it was, but someone important. No, it's fine. <laughs> um... Yeah, so bass videos are sort of funny. I've managed to talk for 10 minutes without actually playing anything, so I'm just playing straight into my after the end Marshall there. Um, I'll try and play some. In fact, I might even put a, can I put a drum. Put some drums on.
love a P bass pickup. Um, I just think if the P bass just gives you the sound you want, normally I would play it uh, full up. never used a tone control until I joined the Black Sabbath band, in which case you kind of need it to get a bit more woolly. I mean, you kind of don't want to hear the it kind of clashes with the guitar a bit, so fully, fully on the tone. Super access to the, the high frets on this one because it's uh, because it's neck through and there's no heel, so it really is. I have to do something about this squeaky, squeaky strap, and if you're gonna buy this, it's a wooden proper strap, it deserves it. Um, it probably also deserves not a fibre from China strings. Um, maybe have a wee look at buying some roto sounds or something for it, just because it's, you know, it's a bit of a fancy one. Um, feeling wise, a wee, wee bit of neck tie, but not, not excessively, so it's not, you know, it's not a thunderbird. My God. Um, it feels like it's got a really long neck, just because I think the body's quite small. But it actually sits, it's significantly lighter than the scavenger, actually. Um, so we've got like a, it's got its own tuners, I've no idea what kind of, the tuners will be go to. Standard bit of brass nut, wooden truss rod cover, which you can't see because of the, the way the light is. Um, as you can see when the light hits off, it's not shiny. But now that I know it works, I will be getting some sort of buffing machine compound. So I think it, it should be back to, I mean, because I think it's been covered in red paint since the 80s, I think it's actually quite a vibrant colour, you know, compared to most of these. It's, it doesn't seem to have dulled very much, it seems quite radiant. Also, it seems to have a bit of a red tint to it, I think, which is left over from the, the red paint. These things are covered in, like, a pure thick poly finish. So, uh, it's, it's, that's how it survived in below the, the red paint. I think it... That's one of the reasons it's so scratched. I think it would be like keyed, you know, it'd been um, lightly sanded before they applied the red paint. So that's why it's just quite so um, scratched up. But I mean, it's like, I dare say, would you even notice that it wasn't, you know, it kind of looks like it's meant to be this color. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So I'm looking forward to taking this into the, the Sabbath band um, and basically showing off with it. Um, I think it's, it's very pretty. The only bass I've got that's actually similar, it feels like, and is generally quick. I've got an Aria Pro 2 PB 1500, which is sort of like a Les Paul bass. Well, the, the Aria PE um, series, if you've ever looked them up, is kind of like was their answer to the Les Paul. Their, their attempt at making the best guitar ever made. It's a bit, so it's kind of halfway between a Les Paul and a Fender type thing. Um, it, was, it was there to compete with, with these things. Um, but it kind of feels the same. I don't know whether that's just because it's neck through or just because maybe the sort of Gibson-esque body tends to be a bit shorter, you know, a P-Bass kind of because it's got the big horns. The, the neck doesn't seem as, as long in relation to the body. But I mean, I think just going for looks, it's like, it's kind of got that sort of slightly like an EBO type vibe thing going on about it. Um, apart from its full scale length, which obviously EBOs aren't. Um, so I don't know why they didn't sell. I don't know why you, they never. It's never been reissued. Um, it's, it's never been reissued. All the other ones have kind of you know you kind of sneak them out of it and again this one. It's kind of you got to buy one from the seventy nine. I think maybe 78, 79, 80, 81 was maybe the years they ran for. Don't know. As I said, they, don't, they didn't make it into any catalogs, so they're kind of an unknown entity a bit. Um, So I'll not be selling this one. Uh, so I've now got the choice because I, I took that in with the Black Sabbath band and it's amazing that thing. It's like you can't, re there's only so much you can test out a bass like sitting in here, okay I do have like a, a gigging amp in here but I'm not playing along with drums and stuff so you can't really get the full feeling to how good this is going to be and so far it feels like it's going to be absolutely stunning but I mean I thought that about that, you know that was amazing and then when I started you know stuck it through the big amp and played it super volume it was just, <sighs> I mean I was an absolute idiot this to do um, I've, I've actually took a video but I've not put it up, I've been bit, because I've not been in, in playing the bass for ages I was totally all over the place like in a not in a bad way in a, in a bad way in a showy off way because hundreds of the sabbath stuff you know you get that but behind all the solos and i was just going absolutely mental on it i was playing really loud it was great fun just absolutely loving myself and the rest of the band were actually just kind of laughing at me a little bit So after all, all the disappointment of having to wait a year for this to get delivered, then arriving and being covered in red paint and not being the super rare, doesn't actually exist red version, although a red one might exist somewhere because they could, people could sort of custom order them, um, it's really nice. And it's just like, it's already one of my favourite bases, just because it's just, it's just really nice. Rock on. <laughs> <laughs> 